All right, guys, so I'm measuring for my piston and wall clearance. And it's always like tricky whenever I get to this because I don't measure stuff every day. So I did this kind of an easy way. Um, I measured out all of my pistons. All of my pistons are pretty much at 4.153. So I grabbed my micrometer. I set it to the right width. And I have an ID mic just to check it. And it's at 4.153 which the measurement at this point doesn't really matter because what we're looking for is clearance. So I set up my micrometer here to the width of the piston. And I'll show you guys if my wife can get in here close enough. So we're gonna put the pinpoints of the, of the bore gauge right in the middle. All right, now look at the dial. We're at 16. So that means at 16 thousandths, each one of those little lines is worth a half a thou. So, and then we're going to go here on the bore, so we know that's the widest part. The widest part of the piston at the bottom of the skirt is four point, or it's at 16, right? So that's uh, 16 thou. Keep that in mind. So now we're going to take this. So it should be about 11 and a half. We just got to rock it in there and find the highest point on the dial. And it should be about 11 and a half. Now, 11 and a half is our, our uh, narrowest point. 12 happen to be our, or, or 11 and a half is our widest point of the cylinder bore at the bottom. At the very top, it's 12. So we got about a half a thou of taper in the cylinder, which isn't bad at all. So let's do the math here. 16.5 minus 11.5, that's 4.5. We got about four and a half thousandths piston and wall clearance to, uh, for number, which this is, this is the odds, this is the even side. So this would be cylinder number eight. Yeah, eight, sorry. I was, I'm looking at it backwards. I usually work on that end, but since we're doing a video, so, and usually when you check for bore taper, you want to check at the top. This right here should be about 12. It should swing at 12 at its widest point. And then in the middle, it drops to about 11 and a half. And then at the bottom, it's also 11 and a half where the piston sees most of its action. At the top, at the top of the cylinder, the piston's almost squared up. So if you can think about the motion of a cylinder, or a piston in the cylinder, it rocks like this, you know, as it comes up and it goes, so on its, on its way down it rocks, but on its way up it drags into the cylinder. Usually a cylinder will wear into an egg shape. So when you're talking about taper, that's usually what you're talking about. This is pretty good. On this particular cylinder, we only got about a half thou of taper, which is really good. And I'm going to do the same for the, although we have numbers for our rod and main journals, I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to set up my micrometer, find them out. You know, I with the pistons, I was lucky that uh, they were all really close. And even with our journals for the rods, they were all really close. So, I mean, the difference we're talking here is going to be tenths. So, not going to worry about those tenths. We're worried about the main focus here because... Um, on my numbers, when I did the math, I'm talking a swing between three and seven tenths. Um, you know, so you, it, it's, um, you know, so they're really close. So let's see here. When we're, when we're talking about our, you know, when you look at our numbers for the rods, it's 2.479, 2.479, 2.479, 2.479, with only a two-tenth spread between all the rods. So really, this is gonna be kind of the number we're gonna focus on if we were to do it that way, but the way I'm doing is, I'm just finding the overall difference between the two by using the gauge here. So when I set up my micrometer to the rod journals, just like I did with the pistons, we're gonna go ahead, set that up, and then go ahead and set it up in the rod bores with the, with the bearings in there. And whatever the difference is, that's our clearance. And that's the easiest way to do it. 
Some guys may agree, some guys may disagree. That's just the way I do it. Now I can go on and make endless videos about this, but pretty much measuring your bores, your rod mains, or your rod mains, I keep saying that, your rod journals, your main journals, um, you know, and measuring your, your bores for the rods and the mains uh, is pretty much the same thing as that. And the only different procedure between all of those is really gonna be degreeing the camshaft, which there's people way better than me, so I'm not even gonna touch that subject because I always struggle with degreeing a camshaft and it usually takes me a couple of hours despite the fact that I've done quite a few. So pretty much I got, um, I got my bearings here in my mind set up so that tomorrow I can have a pretty productive day and we can measure most of the stuff out and get it together. And I'm gonna finish up the rest of these cylinders and then probably tomorrow morning do the, do the mains, do the rods, get all that stuff set up and then go from there. Um, so hopefully by the end of the day, we can have most of this engine together. So we'll see you guys, share, like, subscribe. It's kind of been a long day. I tore a transmission apart this morning and I'm kind of worn out, but I'm gonna finish measuring this stuff out and go from there. See ya.